Hello everyone and welcome back to Miss Key's classroom. My name is Rachel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing how I maintain my work-life balance as a teacher because as we all know teachers are very busy people and we have a lot of different things that we are trying to manage and so sometimes we don't get the time to do the things outside of school that we might like to. However, I think that every teacher should be able to have a good work-life balance. And so in this video, I'll be sharing sort of how I go about managing my time and making sure that I do have time for doing the things outside of school that I would really like to do. Let's get straight into it. So my first piece of advice would be to come up with a routine that works for you. Um, so when I'm talking about a routine, I mean from day to day, what are the things that you've just built into the way that you run your life to make sure that you are getting in that time for you as well. There's a few things that I do that help me do that. So I'll share them with you now. The first one is the time that I get to school and the time that I leave school. For me, I get to school between about 7.45 and 8 o'clock because then it gives me about 45 minutes to half an hour before the students get, it, uh, get to school to plan whatever I'm doing or just finalize any last minute lessons, get my classroom all set up and ready to go before the kids arrive. Other people I know though get to work about seven o'clock in the morning. And so working out, all right, what time realistically is gonna work for me to get to school? So like I said, I like to get to school roughly around the same time each day um, so that I know how much time I've got before the start of lessons to get everything prepped and ready to go. Then at the end of the day, I try and leave around the same time as well. For me, I leave quite early um, after that last bell goes. So I leave around 3.30 3 to 4 o'clock. Um, the reason I like to do that is because I find that after a full day of teaching, I am just absolutely wrecked and I need a second for myself before I start doing work again. And so I like to get out of school quite early because for, for me, my drive home is about 20 minutes. And so that gives me enough time to just reset, relax, maybe process anything that's happened during the day um, so that I am ready to restart doing work again when I get home. Um, and then when I get home, I tend to work from about 4.30 to 6. Um, obviously, it varies depending on the night. Some nights I might have heaps of work to do and I have to work way beyond 6. Um, but in general, I try and just smash out all the work after school so that then I can have the rest of the night free. But obviously, like I said before, you've got to work out what works for you. So maybe you're the kind of person who likes doing all their work at work. And so you might stay at work until 6 p.m. to get it all done and then go home um, and you can have your home life just as home life. There's no work there. But for me, I find that having that 20 minute break on the drive home and then working when I get home um, is the way that I am most productive and I get the most work done. So it's really about what's work, what works out for you. Um, but then another thing I build into my routine is exercise. I think that exercise is so important. Um, no matter what kind of exercise it is, I just think it's so good to sort of, it's good for our minds, it's good for our bodies. And so I try and build in a little bit of exercise each day. Sometimes it's just a five minute walk around the block. Sometimes it's a full gym session, but um, it really depends on the day. But I think that building in those sorts of things um, into your routine is really important. So exercise is a big one for me, but maybe it might be something different for you. Maybe it's taking an hour or two hours a night just sitting and watching Netflix to recharge. Whatever works for you is um, what you should build into your routine. This is just what I like to do. Um, but definitely after I have done my little bit of exercise, I will either just relax for the rest of the night, maybe watch some TV or something like that, read a book. Um, but other nights, obviously we might have more work to be doing. And so after I've done my exercise, I might cook dinner, have dinner, and then do a little bit more work. But definitely I try and not work beyond sort of 8.30, 9 o'clock, because I just think by that time of night, I'm not at my best. Um, and it's better to just leave it until the morning, maybe get to school a little bit earlier that day if I'm super under the pump. Um, but again, it's all about working out what works for you. But that's a little overview of what my routine looks like. And so if you're finding that you are working all the time to try and keep up, try and work out, okay, where could I build in these things that I really want to do? So maybe it is going to the gym or going for a walk or going to the beach, whatever it is that you feel like you don't have time to do. 
write out your week and sort of work out, okay, where could I fit this in? Am I spending way too much time at work on this one particular thing that I could save time doing another way or something like that? So if you don't have a routine, try and work out a one that works for you um, and try and stick to it as well. Because for me, I find that it's the best way to be the most efficient at my work, to get the most work done and make the most of the time that I do have. All right, the next piece of advice sort of follows on from number one, but it is to set boundaries with yourself and to stick to them. Often we will set boundaries with other people. However, we sort of don't do it with ourselves as much. Um, but when I was at uni, I sort of set in place some boundaries for doing uni work and they've sort of carried over to my teaching life as well. One big one is that for me, I don't do any work on Saturdays. My best friend actually got me onto this one because when we were at uni, she always refused to do work on Saturdays. And I thought, how on earth is she doing this? You know, I've got so much work to do. I have to work on Saturdays. Saturdays, but I found that when I sort of built that into the routine that I've created for myself and I set that boundary with myself that I don't work on Saturdays, that I just sort of the time I found time elsewhere to do the things that I would always usually do on Saturdays, the work I was doing on those Saturdays. I found, I don't know, it was just weird. I sort of found time during the week to do those things. So it was like once I'd set that boundary, I stuck to it pretty much all the time. Obviously, there are times, like I said before, when things will come up and you might have accidentally made four drafts due in one weekend or something like that and you just have to work on the Saturday. Um, but majority of the time, I don't work on Saturdays and it's just my day for me to do the things I want to do, like hanging out with my friends, seeing my family, going out to lunch, all those sorts of things. And so for me, that's one of the biggest boundaries I set is no work on Saturdays. Obviously, like I said, it's about what finding what finding out what works for you. Maybe it's that you don't work on Wednesday nights or something. I don't know. But for me, Saturdays is my day just for me to do the things I want to do. Another thing is replying to emails. Um, this one I found a little bit harder to stick to because often when I read something like an email or a text message or whatever, I just, I, I have this need to respond to it straight away. And so one boundary that I've set myself is that I don't reply to emails after nine o'clock either. So for me to do that, it often involves me not checking my email, which I find a little bit tricky. But I've learned, I guess, in especially this past year that if there is something urgent, something I really need to know, someone will call me or text me or something like that. They're not going to email something that I have to know straight away. And so for me, I don't check my emails or at least I try not to check my emails after nine o'clock on the weeknights um, because then I won't be tempted. Sorry, a little buggy there. <laughs> so then I won't be tempted to respond to them because majority of the emails we get, they can wait until the morning. They don't need to be responded to right at that very moment. And so, yeah, no emails for me after nine o'clock as well. And then the last boundary that I sort of set with myself is that on Sundays, that is my day for doing the work that I need to do for the following week. Um, so often on Sundays, I'll take a little bit of time for myself, maybe to go to the gym, um, to do some meal prep um, for the week ahead. And then generally on Sunday afternoon, that is when I will sit down and I will do my work. Um, and I sort of allocate a couple of hours for that. Obviously, like I said, sometimes things blow out and you need way longer than you thought or that, something like that. Um, but on Sundays, that is generally when I do my work. And so by saying no work on Saturdays, my compromise is that I work on Sundays instead. I like working on Sundays as opposed to Saturdays because I feel like Sunday is sort of like the pre-Monday, if that makes sense. It's sort of like um, the getting ready for Monday, or that's how I view it anyway. And so I like to prep everything, get everything ready to go on Sunday so that I feel really prepared for the week ahead. And so that's sort of, I guess, another boundary that I set with myself is that Sundays is the weekend day that I work. Um, so yeah, I think that everyone's boundaries need to be different. It depends on what will work for you. Those are just some examples of the ones I set myself. Um, but yeah, spend some time working out, okay, what boundaries could I set with myself and how can I make sure that I stick to them? Obviously make sure that they are attainable as well. Probably sitting down and saying, you know, I'm never going to work at home ever or I'm never going to do work, um, you know, after 3.30 or anything like that probably for us as teachers isn't attainable. Um, but 
sitting down, work out what's going to work for you, what's going to be achievable and which ones you're actually going to be able to stick to. Like I said before, I do struggle with the email ones sometimes, but definitely having those boundaries in place does help me a lot and helps me to make sure that I am taking time for me and that I'm not just totally consumed by work all the time. My final piece of advice is about prioritizing, um, but also being okay when things aren't totally perfect. Um, I struggle a lot with both of these, especially in my first year of teaching, I really struggled with prioritizing and struggled with a bit of perfectionism, um, maybe a lot of perfectionism. Um, but when it comes to prioritizing, um, when I'm talking about this, I mean prioritizing all the things that you have to do. So as teachers, we often have crazy long to-do lists of everything we need to do, regardless of whether it's the holidays or it's during the term, we always seem to have a million things we could be doing. Um, but with my to-do lists, I now write them out in order of priority because I found that when I'd get home to spend that hour and a half working that I'd allocated myself, I'd spend it doing the things that I really wanted to do and putting off the things that I maybe didn't want to do. So I would spend heaps of time making new resources, but then wouldn't start on the 26 drafts that I had to do. And I'd sort of leave them to the last minute. And that sort of caused a heap of more stress, a heap more stress, sorry, than there needed to be if I had just started with the drafts in the first place and prioritized. And so sitting down and doing the things that you absolutely need to do first is really important. It seems so obvious, but I used to really just leave all of those things to the last minute, procrastinate all the things I didn't want to do, spend heaps of time doing the things I did want to do. And then, yeah, I'd cause myself a heap more stress. So when you're writing your to-do list, maybe put some numbers or stars or color code it or something in terms of order of priority so that when you are sitting down to do your work, you know, okay, I've got to get these drafts done or I've got to get that marking done and then I can do these other things. Um, but then also when it comes to doing the work, doing the things that you have prioritized, um, be okay with things maybe not being quite as perfect as you would like them. Like I said, I do struggle with a bit of perfectionism or a lot of perfectionism sometimes. And so in my first year of teaching, I thought that everything had to be perfect. The lessons that I planned had to be absolutely perfect, that nothing could ever go wrong. Um, and so I used to spend hours a night working and making these lessons, making these resources and all of those things. But then as I sort of continued teaching, I found that, you know, the decisive element in the room, in the classroom, it's not the resource that you're giving the kids. It's not the colors that are on the resource or how pretty it is. The decisive in, element in the room is you. It is about how energetic you are, how passionate you are, how much you want to teach these kids that they are going to learn no matter what resource you give them. If you are excited about what you're teaching, they're going to learn, even if the resource maybe isn't as perfect or as pretty as you would want it to be. And that sort of was a bit of a tough lesson for me to learn because I have definitely grown up, you know, having everything perfect and all those sorts of things. And so then maybe when I didn't have as much time as I wanted, to make things the way they wanted. I did really struggle with that. But as I said, over time, I've learned that not everything needs to be perfect to have an amazing lesson or to have an amazing day or an amazing week. Um, often it's just about you being there, you showing up and being excited and being passionate for those kids and showing that you care about them and about their learning. And so, yeah, I guess when you are prioritizing and you're thinking about, okay, I've got, you know, two hours right now, I'm going to do this, this, and this. If one of those things is maybe planning for a lesson and making new resources and new content and all those sorts of things, maybe just think about, okay, how much time do I actually need to spend on this? Um, because if the students are going to use whatever you're making or whatever you're planning, if they're only going to do that for five minutes in the lesson, don't spend hours making it. That's definitely the trap that I fell into. You know, I would make this amazing resource or um, plan this amazing lesson, like a lesson activity or something. And I would spend hours doing it. And then the kids would do it for like five or 10 minutes and then it would be over. And so all that effort for five or 10 minutes of a little bit of learning, it wasn't quite working out for me. Um, and so I learned that, you know, sometimes you just need to put something together. It doesn't always have to be perfect and the kids are still going to love it and still going to learn from it. So 
yeah, overall, I guess that's my advice for how to manage work-life balance. I hope that some of you have found this useful so that you can maintain the balance in your life when you are a teacher. It is really hard, especially in your first few years of teaching, because we are under so much pressure, to, I guess, to perform and, you know, create amazing lessons and all those sorts of things. Um, but definitely build in those routines, set those boundaries and prioritize that to-do list so that you can maintain the balance in your life. Um, but for now, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you all very soon in my next video. Bye.